Okay, we're going to talk about basic HVAC heat flow equations, which are very useful for many people studying for exams, but just in general, it's a good review. We're going to hit sensible heat transfer for air first, then we're going to hit sensible heat transfer for water, and then we're going to do a quick discussion on sensible and latent heat transfer for air. Okay, quick definitions. Sensible heat is basically the heat as if you would see it on a thermometer. It has nothing to do with the humidity of the air. Latent heat basically is the energy associated with the phase change of a material or changes in humidity, either one. When you have more humidity, you have more energy in the air. And then enthalpy is the total of these two. Basically, it's the, another way to say it would be the total energy density of the air or the water. Basically, it's the total energy density of a substance. Okay, let's do the first one, sensible heat transfer for air. And there's the, the blue text here is telling you the overall master equation is here with some definitions here and here. But if you look at the overall definition, there's a lot of things that don't really change. There's the density of air, time hopefully won't change on us, and the specific heat of air is pretty much constant at standard condition sea level. So if you combine all these constants together, you get one kind of shortcut equation, it's cubic feet per minute, CFM, times 1.08 times delta T. Now, if you've done this before, maybe you want to quiz yourself, just pause the recording right here, see if you can solve this problem. If not, just we'll go through this right now. So this is an example, you got 1,000 cubic feet per minute of 50 degree outside air, and then you heat that up to 75 degrees. And ignoring humidity, what's the conductive heat flow? So we're going to use the equation on the previous slide, Q equals 1.08 times CFM times delta T. If you multiply all those things together, you get 27,000. And the units here are in BTU per hour. So this is the correct answer, B. And this is a very simple equation to do. Similarly, for water, if we're just looking at sensible heat transfer for water, the equation is this one here, the master equation. But again, we have all these constants. And if you multiply all the constants together, you get a nice clean equation that looks like this. I like to apply this equation into what I call a jacuzzi example. So you've got 60 degree water coming from the ground and you want to heat that to 110 degrees. Say you want a flow rate of 10 gallons per minute. So the question is how big of a heater do you need? If you've done this before, pause the recording. If not, let's do the equation. Q equals 500 GPM times delta T. If you multiply all these things together, you get 250,000 BTUs per hour. By the way, all Q equations are going to have BTU per hour, little Q equations. So 250,000 BTU hour, choice B. So let's talk briefly about heat flow equations, say HVAC, that have both sensible and latent heat changes going on. So say it's going from 60 degrees and a certain humidity to 90 degrees and a different humidity. Anytime you have two humidities, you have to use this equation, mass flow rate times delta H. And in this case, the only thing that's different, you see these constants showing up, but you'll notice something different over here is you have delta H. Okay, now that's not delta T as it was in the sensible heat equations. Delta H is change in enthalpy. And to solve this type of problem, you need to go to the psychrometric charts, which are covered in a different video. But I just wanted to introduce you guys to this concept that this is the equation that you would use. Notice it's 4.5 times delta H. Again, it's a Q equation, so it's got BTU per hour. But you're going to have to go to the psych chart to get this value. One final thing to review is that sometimes we want to express the heat flow equations in SI units. And so you'll notice these are very elegant and simple. Um, take a look at the numbers here. For sensible heat transfer for air, the equation is Q equals 1.2 times LPS, which means liters per second. That's kind of like our cubic feet per minute, but liters per second of air. And notice the units are in watts. What's interesting, if we jump down to the bottom one down here and look at sensible and latent heat transfer for air, it's again 1.2 times liters per second, but the only thing that's different is the delta H. And then for water, it's 4.2 times liters per second times delta T, and the main difference is that the units are in kW. That makes sense just like in the U.S. version, that the water contains more heat capacity, uh, so the units are higher. Anyway, hopefully this helps you. We've talked about in U.S. units and SI units, heat transfer for air, heat transfer for water, and then heat transfer for 
briefly, we talked about sensible and latent, latent heat transfer for air. And again, you go to the psych chart to solve those kinds of problems. Okay, hopefully this has been helpful to you, and we'll catch you in the next section.